This video explains how to apply a function to each cell of a data frame using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with lines two to four of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our example data frame contains five rows and three columns, which are called x1, x2 and x3. Now, let's assume that we want to apply a certain user defined function to each cell of this data frame. Then we first need to create such a user defined function, as you can see in lines six to eight of the code. So in this case, our function will apply the paste function to a data frame cell and it will paste the character string out, underscore and the value that is already contained in this data frame cell. So after running lines six to eight of the code, you can see that this user defined function called myFun is appearing at the top right. And now if we would like to apply this function to only one cell of our data frame, we could simply apply it as you can see in line 10 of the code. So in line 10 of the code, I'm applying this function to the column x1 and to the third cell of this column. So after running line 10 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the output out three is returned. And this is because the data frame cell contained the value three. And now we have added the prefix out underscore to this cell. Now, if we want to apply our function to all cells of our data frame, then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 12 and 13. So in line 12 of the code, I'm first duplicating our data frame because I also want to keep an original version of our data frame. So after running this line of code, a new data set called data new one is appearing at the top right. And at this point of the video, this data frame contains exactly the same values as our input data frame data. Now, if we want to apply our function to each cell of this data frame, we can use the lapply function. And within the lapply function, we need to specify the name of our data frame. And we also need to specify the name of our function. And then we need to assign the output of the lapply function to our data frame. And note that we also have to specify squared brackets at the end of the name of this data frame. So after running line 13 of the code, our new data frame is updated and we can see that by clicking on the data frame at the top right. And now you can see that we have created a new data frame which contains the values of our input data frame with the prefix out. So in this first example, I have explained how to use base R to apply a function to each cell of a data frame. However, it's also possible to apply the functions of the dplyr package for this task. And in order to do that, we first need to install and load the dplyr package, as you can see in lines 15 and 16 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 16 of the code. And after running this line of code, we can use the mutate all function of the dplyr package. And within this function, we need to specify our user defined function. And then we can use the pipe operator to apply this function to all cells of our data frame. In this case, I'm also creating a new data set called data new2, which will contain the output of the mutate all function. So after running lines 18 and 19 of the code, another data frame called data new2 is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data frame, you can see that it has exactly the same values as our previously created data frame. However, this time we have used the functions of the dplyr package. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. 
If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.